what's going on everybody god bless you guys in the mighty mighty name of jesus man i pray that y'all having a blessed and wonderful day uh it's a beautiful beautiful sunday evening man the presence of the lord is just moving um this evening uh, I, I feel it in my spirit uh, i feel it in my home um i feel it with the brethren i feel it in this city in this state in this nation I feel God moving, and I know that you can feel it too, man. Today, I just want to get on here once again, man. I did um, promise to continue to go live on our We Were Built for This platform in order to declare God's goodness, in order to declare God's word, in order to declare everything that God has been doing since day one. We want to continue to stand on his promises. We want to continue to stand on his word. And we want to continue to stand on his word. You know why? Because the Bible says that it is the goodness of God that turns a sinner to repentance. The goodness of God, right? And I want to encourage you today. Look, man, I don't know exactly where you are today. Don't know exactly where you are in this season. I, I'm not God, right? I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you've been facing this weekend. I don't know what you got in your fridge. I don't know what you got in your house. I don't know what situation you might be facing. But you know what I do know? The one thing I do know is that the word of God says that everything that you need pertaining to godliness in this life is right here in this book. Though your bank account may not be looking right. Though your fridge may not be looking right. <laughs> Though your local grocery store and marketplace may not be looking God right, you can look upon the word of God and everything in here is beneficial to your soul. Everything in here will take you to the next level. Everything in here will take you into the next season. Everything in here will prepare you for the afterlife. And today, in the name of Jesus, I just declare that over your life today, man. Come on, today, I want to speak about what God has been saying. Today, I heard an encouraging message this morning as we had service in my living room. And, 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 and that, that word was, hear what the Lord has to say. Hear what the Lord has to say. Here's the deal, my brothers. We all know that there is so many voices that we hear in this day and age. So many things that we hear. We hear our voice. We hear the voice of others. We hear the voice of the enemy. We hear the voice of the media. We hear the voice of, of everyone. But my word, my question is, are you hearing the word of God? Are you hearing what God has been saying all Lelong, let me tell you something right now. In the name of Jesus, I want to encourage you with the word because I believe that God is saying something tonight. As I hear the thunder shaking in the heavens tonight, as I hear the rain fall upon this earth, I ask God that he may flood the earth with his presence, that he may flood the earth with his voice, that as the thunders roar, as the heavens shake, that his voice comes forth and that he speaks to his people. Let me tell you right now, let me share something that hasn't changed. Let me share something that God has been saying since the beginning. Since the beginning. God will always, always choose to restore than to destroy. Man, I hope you're hearing me right now. God will always, always choose to restore than to destroy. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just come before you right now, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for this blessed opportunity that we may come before your holy throne right now, Lord Jesus. Father God, that you may speak to us right now, Father God. I pray, Father God, that anything and everything that is not of you, that it may be quiet right now, Father God. Father God, that if this word itself, Father God, is not from you, that you will shut it down in the name of Jesus, Father God. I pray right now, Father God, that you remove everything that is of me. Everything that is of my flesh, everything that is of myself, Father God, that you may remove it right now. Help me decrease, Father God, that you may increase in this place, Father God. That your word may come forth, Father God. That your mercy may be seen, Father God. That your grace may be revealed, Father God. That your anointing may fall, Father God, that will break the yoke, the bondage of fear, the bondage of lies, the bondage of sin. Right now, in the name of Jesus, God, we declare it over our lives. We declare it over our cities. We declare it over our state. We declare it over this great nation and the world in the mighty, mighty 
name of Jesus. Let me tell you right now, my brothers, God will always choose to restore rather than to destroy. And you might be wondering, man, Brother George, I'm not sure if that's necessarily true. And I want to take you back. I want to take you back. The Bible says that in the book of Genesis, when humanity sinned, the punishment for sin was death. That was the punishment. The punishment was death. And God said, you know what? I will cover your nakedness. I will cover your shame. I'm going to kick you out the garden, but I will cover your shame. And I will make another covenant with your children. You see, the Bible is clear that the punishment for sin was death. But, but, but God decided to restore. God decided to cover the nakedness of humanity. God decided to cover them and once again allow them to bring forth their obedience. Gave them an opportunity to choose life over death. The Bible is clear that God decided to restore. When Cain and Abel were bringing forth their offerings to God. The Bible says that God spoke to Cain. Even after he murdered his, his brother, he spoke to Cain and he told him and he warned them. Warned him that sin was crouching at the door. That sin was waiting at the door. Why would God warn? Because God wanted to restore. God wanted to make whole. God wanted to cleanse. God wanted to change. God wanted to move upon his life. It ain't no different today, my brothers. It ain't no different today. The Bible says that he came to Noah and he spoke to Noah and he told Noah that he looked upon humanity, that he looked upon everything that he had built and he was grieved. He was grieved. And he said, I will flood the earth. Now you might say, Brother George, that sounds like him destroying everything. Well, let me ask you something. When God flooded the earth, what did he flood the earth with? He flooded the earth with water. He flooded the earth with a source of life. He flooded the earth with something that will bring forth fruition. He flooded the earth. He baptized the earth. He surrounded the earth. He covered the earth in water that the earth may be replenished. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says that when we partake, when we partake in baptism, the old is passed away. Behold, the new has come. Do you understand that when God flooded the earth, that was his way of restoring a falling world? Come on, you got to hear what I'm saying right now in the name of Jesus. God said that he wanted to restore the earth. God said that he, would, he saved Noah. He told Noah. Take each and every one of these animals. These animals would come to you. These animals, I would send them to you. Build this boat. Build this ark. Let me tell you something. God did not destroy the whole earth. He flooded the earth with something that would bring forth life. Something that would bring forth fruition. Do you understand that the greatest time to plant something is after it rains? Listen to what the word of God is saying right now. Listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying right now. When the word of God says that he will come and plant something, do you know what God will do first? He will flood your life. He would allow your life to become a place where the ground has been softened by the Holy Spirit. He will send people to till the land. He will send water to come by. To come upon your life that he may be able to plant the seed. Jesus spoke about the seeds that fell by, on the byway. Jesus spoke about the seeds that fell on the rugged ground. Jesus spoke about the seeds that fell amongst the, the thorns. Do you hear what God is saying today? When God flooded the earth, he flooded the earth for a reason. He flooded the earth for a particular reason. God did something that would bring forth restoration upon the earth. But a lot of people don't see that. A lot, look, the Bible says, let, let's, let's, keep, let's move forward. God then made a covenant with Noah. He made a covenant with Noah once again. He allowed the covenant to continue to move forward. And he restored the planet. He restored the planet. We God caught Abraham out of his country and Abraham left his country. God gave him vision. God told him where to go. God promised that he would protect him. God told him that he would bring forth a nation that would be greater than the stars in the heavens, than the grains of sand on the beach. 
and Abraham moved. Now we all know that Abraham went one direction and Lot went another direction and God looked upon Saddam and Gomorrah. And he seen that things weren't going right. He seen that things were where they needed to be. And what did he do? God could have go, God could have sent another flood. God could have destroyed the whole earth. But God spoke to Abraham. God told Abraham what he was about to do. Yes, he destroyed Saddam and Gomorrah, but God allowed Abraham to pull out that which was good, that which would bring forth life, that which would continue to move in the process, that would, which could be restored. God will always choose to restore. Hear what I'm saying, guys. God will always choose to restore rather than to destroy. Do you know why God destroyed Saddam and Gomorrah? Because in that moment, in that time, Saddam and Gomorrah had enough capacity, had enough influence that it would corrupt everything that God was trying to do. God had to destroy Saddam and Gomorrah in order for his plan of restoration to continue to move forward. Do you hear what God is trying to say? You see, a lot of people are scared right now. A lot of people were tripping right now. But what God is doing, God is starting a process of restoration in this nation. God is starting a process of restoration in his people. Those that have fallen away will come back to the feet of Jesus. Those that had never uh, came to the feet of Jesus now are in panic. Now are, are, are wondering what could they do? How would they feed their family? And they have no choice but to cry out to the God that provides, to the God that will make a way. You have to be able to understand what God is doing. God will always choose to restore rather than to destroy. Always. God was doing this from the beginning. God's mercy is the key instrument in this world that we live. When the children of Israel went to Egypt, right? When the children of Israel went to Egypt, God said that he heard their cries. He heard their cries and God sent somebody to go and pull them out. Let me tell you something. Egypt was wicked, my brothers. Egypt was wicked. And let me tell you something. Though the children of Israel were crying out, they weren't the most obedient people. They had taken up the customs of Egypt. They had taken up the, 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 the rituals of Egypt. They have started worshiping the gods of Egypt, eating the food that the Egyptians ate. They had been influenced by Egypt. If God would have been completely just by destroying the whole land of Egypt and not pulling out his people. But God said that through the children of Israel, a Messiah would come. Through the children of Israel, through the seed of Abraham, a Savior would come. So in order for me to restore, I cannot destroy. In order for me to protect, I must restore. In order for me to bring life, I must, I must restore. Let me tell you something. Thing. God pulled his people out of Egypt. God pulled his people out of Egypt. Do you understand that that's part of the restoration process? Do you understand that God decided to pull out a stiff necked people? Let me tell you something. God wasn't confused when the children of Israel started to be disobedient in the wilderness. God wasn't like, hey, what happened? I, I, I thought you loved me. I thought you were crying out to me. God wasn't, God didn't think that he made a mistake by pulling his people out. You got to hear what God is saying tonight. God said restoration will always bring forth fruition. Let me tell you something. If God destroys everything, there is nothing that will continue. If you believe that this coronavirus is the end of the world, let me tell you something. You're not seeing the bigger picture here. You're not seeing the schemes of the enemy. You're not seeing the life, the lies of the other side. If you think that this small virus, which is causing a big panic, is the end of the world, you're not seeing far enough. Because God said that he is patient with his people. He is not slow to wrath. He is patient with his people because he wishes that no man should perish. Do you understand what God is saying today? God took his children out of Egypt, brought them into the wilderness. 
And in the wilderness, once again, they were disobedient. In the wilderness, once again, they turned against God. Once again, they went against everything that, look, let me tell you something, my brother. Some of us have seen signs. Some of us have seen miracles. Some of us are walking, talking signs and miracles. Some of us are those, and we still choose to disobey. We still choose to go against God. We still choose to, 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 to bring up idols. We, 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 we worship man so much that when the man of God falls off, that when the man of God goes away, that when the man of God doesn't answer your phone call, that when the man of God doesn't shake your hand, that when the man of God doesn't pray for you, you buck at God. You get mad at God. You start asking God, why did you bring us out of Egypt? I was better when I was a dope fiend. I was better when I was a crackhead. I made more money when I was out in the world selling drugs. Now I'm over here begging. Now I'm over here busting my butt working 70, 80 hours a week in order to bring a $500 paycheck. God, why did you bring me into this wilderness? Let me tell you why. Because God wanted to restore your life. The children of Israel bucked. The children of Israel lied. The children of Israel brought forth gods out of Egypt into the presence of God. Do you know that the wilderness is known to be a place where God is at? The wilderness is a place where you will find God. Isaiah chapter 40 says, comfort ye, comfort my people. Speak to her, cry out to her tenderly that her iniquity has been forgiven. That she has been pardoned. That she has received double portion for her sins. Prepare ye a way in the wilderness. A highway for the Lord. The wilderness is a place where you will have a one-on-one -on -one encounter with the living God. You got to hear what God is saying. Let me tell you something. God will take you out that comfort zone in order to bring restoration in your life. God will take you out of that season of living it up, of, of, of just chilling and being all right and just bench warming. God will pull you out that season and bring you into the wilderness where you have to cry out, where you have to ask for water, where you have to ask for bread, where you have to ask for light, where you have to ask for warmth. God will bring you to a place where you will be 100% dependent on him. Do you hear what God is trying to say in this season? Look, let me tell you something, man. I'll be honest with you right now. Before my God, I need restoration in my life. I need God to speak to me. I need God to bring forth obedience in my life. I need to be a better man for my wife and my children. I need to be a better husband. I need to be a better father for my son. I need restoration in my life. So when God takes me into the wilderness, you know what I say? All right, God, let's go. Let's do it. Well, whatever you got to do, God, let's go. How many of us say, okay, God, let's go. How many of us take the wilderness in which God has given us and say, you know what, God, if you're in the wilderness, and that's where I want to be. Moses said, God, I will not move unless you move. I will not go unless you come with us. Let me tell you something in the, in the wilderness, the children of Israel were disobedient. And I'm sorry for getting excited, man. I mean, Father God, I just pray right now in the name of Jesus, Father God, that you just remove anything that is not of you. Father God, I know that, 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 that your word is passionate. I know that you're speaking to us as children. I know that, God, but I don't want none of it to be me. I want it all to be you, God. So if it is you, then let us continue. If it is not, Father God, just shut it down right now in the name of Jesus. Let me tell you something, my brothers. In the wilderness, the children of Israel disobeyed. Again, the word of God says that the punishment for sin was death. God could have destroyed the children of Israel and he would have been completely just in doing so. But you know what he did? He gave him a law. He gave him the Ten Commandments and he said, once again, I will start this process of restoration in your life. Once again, I will give you an opportunity. I will give you something that you could read, something that you could have, something that you could follow, something that you could see. And if you disobey, I'm going to give you a way out. I'm going to give you a, a, an offering. I'm going to allow you to do a sacrifice that your iniquity may be covered, that your iniquity may be uh, 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 surrounded by the blood of bulls and goats. So I may look upon that and not look upon your sin again God chose to restore rather than to destroy he was taking them to the promised land let me tell you something do you believe that this right now 
could be a process to take you to the promised land? Do you believe that this whole season could be something that is taking you to the promised land? I believe so. Let me tell you something, man. Our promise is Jesus. Like Pastor Thomas says, Warren, send me to my maker. I don't care. I know where I'm going. If you finna kill me with all this, at least I know I'm going with Jesus. But let me tell you something. I ain't leaving until I preach to the nations. I ain't leaving until I reach some souls. I ain't leaving until I've made it clear that my God is Yahweh and he is the only God. You have to understand this. God is telling us today in this season that he'd rather restore than to destroy. God gave the children of Israel a law that they could follow, that they could see another opportunity that they may be restored as his children. Now, we all know that they got to the edge of the promised land. Joshua was leading them into the promised land. But when they were going into the promised land, all the, the, the 12 spies that they sent in, only 10 of them came back and they had, a, well, 12 of them came back. Only two of them had a good report. The 10 that had a bad report were 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 the ones that caused the whole nation to go back into the wilderness. Now you might say, Brother George, God destroyed all that generation. Yes, but you know what he did? He destroyed that generation in order for the new generation to come forth. And what is that called? Restoration. Restoration. In order to do away, in order to bring forth the new, God had to do away with the old. Just like 2 Corinthians 5.17. Let me tell you something. When God decided to kill the old you in order for a new new you to come forth, that wasn't that wasn't that, that wasn't destruction. That was renewment. That was regeneration. That was him bringing forth something that would be obedient, something that would listen to him, something that would bring forth sacrifices that were pure and holy and without blemish, not like the filthy ones that the children of Israel were bringing in the wilderness. They were lifting up idols. They were stiff-necked. They weren't listening. God took that generation back in in order to bring a new generation out. Yes, that process took 40 years, but it was a process of restoration. Look, guys, I was just going to get on here and share a psalm. <laughs> but praise the Lord, man. God wants to speak to his people. God wants to speak to his people. Understand, Brother Wes, please, bro, if you can copy Psalms 80 out of the New King James and put it in the comments, the whole Psalms, bro, please. Psalms 80. God is speaking to us today because God wants us to know that he'd rather restore. He wants to restore. Look, even when the children of Israel were disobedient and were taken by the Babylonians, were taken by the Persians, when they were took, you have to understand, God was bringing forth restoration. God was cleansing their mind. God was removing those filthy altars that they had lifted up. God was removing those idols. Everything that the children of Israel had done, God was bringing restoration to his people. Understand that. God is bringing restoration right now. Right now. Check it out. The book of Psalms. My King James Version says, Prayer, prayer for Israel's restoration. I was just in a KMF prayer call, right? And we were praying, about 50 brothers, we were praying. And as the Lord was, as, as everybody was praying and everybody was being moved by the Holy Spirit, the Lord gave me this song, Psalm 80. And I want to share it with you guys today. Check it out. Psalms 80. It's a prayer for the restoration of Israel. And I believe that God is doing that right now. God is restoring his people. God is shaking that which is shakable in order for that which is unshakable to remain. And it can be visible to the world that is fallen. Psalms 80 says like this, give ear, O shepherd of Israel. You who will lead Joseph like a flock. You who dwell between the cherubim shine forth before Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh, stir up your strength and come and save us. Let me tell you something right now. God is coming to save his people. God is coming to restore his people. God has been doing this from the jump. Thank you, Brother Wes. Thank you. Check it out, guys. Read with me, man. Check it out, man. Look, let me tell you something. The enemy ain't got nothing on us. The enemy ain't got nothing on the church because we finna have church right now. 
We have in church right now. If you ain't got your Bible, it's right there in the comments. There is no excuse. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, you who lead Joseph like a flock, you who dwell between the cherubim, shine forth. Shine forth right now in the name of Jesus, God. I declare, Father God, that your beauty is shining upon this world. That your light is shining upon this world, Father God. That your glory is manifesting in this world, Father God. That your people are seeing you like never before. And those that don't know you are seeing you like never before. In the name of Jesus, shine forth. Before Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh, stir up your strength and come and save us, God. Save us. Restore us, oh God. Restore us, oh God. You got to follow with me. This is what the word of the Lord is saying. He's saying, restore us, oh God. Cause your face to shine on us as we shall be saved. Let me tell you something right now, my brother. If you're a Christian, if you're a Christian and you believe that you've made it, you got a lot to go. The Bible says that the cross is foolishness to those who are being, those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved. It is the very power and manifestation of God. What does that mean? Being saved. That is a verb. It is an action verb. We are being saved. We are being sanctified. We are being consecrated right now as we speak. Let me tell you something. When you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and he came and lived in your soul and the Holy Spirit came inside of you and regenerated you instantly, your soul was sanctified and placed in heavenly places with Jesus Christ. But as you're in this world, as you're living right now, you were being saved. The Bible says that it is not until we meet death that we are free from sin. I ain't made it yet. None of us have made it yet. The Bible says, check it out. Psalms 80. Oh Lord. It says, restore us, oh God. Cause your face to shine on us and we shall be saved. Now we know that he's speaking to the children of Israel here. We know that this was in the Old Testament, but the Bible is clear. Paul made it clear that everything that you read in the Old Testament that is in the physical, you can apply it to your life in the spiritual. The Bible also says in the New Testament that our weapons are not warfare, that we don't fight against flesh and blood. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but we wrestle against spiritual principalities in high places, right? So when God is speaking in the Old Testament, he is speaking not only physically to you, but spiritually to you. Restore us, O God, cause your face to shine on us, and we shall be saved. Let me ask you something right now. Right now, I know you have a lot of needs. I know right now we all have a lot of needs. But are you asking God to come to save us? Are you asking God to go and save those people that are out there, those that don't know Jesus? Are you asking God to, to save everybody that's taking the toilet paper, everybody that's taking all the waters, everybody that's taking all the ramens, everybody that's taking everything that your family needs? Are you asking God, save them? Because when that food runs out, they don't have you. They don't have you. I have you. Though I could use that water, though I could use that soap, though I could use that, it's you're so burdened because they don't have Jesus. Let me ask you right now, so many of us are worried about the wrong thing. So many of us are worried about the wrong thing. We should be praying for the people. We should be praying for the fallen. We should be praying for the wicked. We should be praying for them because the, the food's going to run out. The water is going to run out. The toilet paper is going to run out. And when it does, do they have Jesus? When it runs out, have you given them Jesus? Have you given them, has the Lord's face shined upon you so brightly that when they see you, they see hope? Look, man, we cannot be selfish with our salvation. Come on, man. You got to hear what God is saying. God is not restoring you so you can be selfish. God is restoring his people. So when he comes back for his church, he comes back for a church that is holy, comes back for a church that has no blemish, comes back for a church that is not uh, uh, filled with iniquity, that is not filled with pride. <coughs> understand what the word of God is saying in this season. God is restoring his people so his face may shine upon them. Shine upon them. Check it out, man. Check it out. It says, 
Verse 4. O Lord God of hosts, how long will you be angry against the prayer of your people? You have fed them with the bread of tears. You have given them tears to drink in great measure. You have made us strife to our neighbors and our enemies laugh amongst themselves. Let me tell you something. The church in itself, the church in itself, and I don't mean those that are pure in heart. I don't mean those that are honest, those that are true, those that worship in spirit and truth. If that's you, praise the Lord. But I'm talking about this counterfeit church that has been corrupting our nation from the jump. This counterfeit church, the Bible says that their prayers have become an abomination. The Bible says that their sacrifices have become unworthy. The Bible says that God looks upon the prayers of the uh, uh, of the wicked and that he considers them an abomination. There is a church, a counterfeit church. There is an antichrist spirit that has been lingering in the church for, for, for decades and decades and decades that makes those that are fallen, that makes those that are in the world, look upon the church of Christ, look upon the body of Christ and say, where is their God? Where is their God? In this season, it's not time to argue about doctrine, man. In this season, it's not time to argue about what denomination is right and what denomination is wrong. It's not that time. Right now, people need to see the glory of God shining upon our faces. Do you understand what God is saying? He is bringing restoration. There is a counterfeit church out there that has made us look bad. We need to take our place. We need to stand up. We need to pray. We need to fast. Man, we don't need to go out there looking all bummy, making people think that our God isn't good. No, our God is good. Our God is mighty. Our God is awesome. You have brought a vine out of Egypt. You have cast out the nations and planted it. You prepared room for it and caused it to take deep root and filled the land. Check it out. And I skipped, I'm sorry. Verse 7, restore us, O God of hosts. Cause your face to shine and we shall be saved. Let me tell you something. God says this three times. Verse 8, you have brought a vine out of Egypt. You have cast out the nations and planted it. You prepared room for it. You caused it to take deep root and filled the land. The hills were covered with its shadow and the mighty cedars with its bows. You sent out her bows to the sea and her branches to the river. Why have you broken down her hedges so that all who pass by will pluck her fruit, the boar out in the woods and the woods uproots it and the wild beast of the field devours it. Return, we beseech you, O God of hosts, look down from heaven and see and visit this vine. What is God saying? God is speaking about the children of Israel. He took them out of Egypt. He took them out of captivity and he planted them in the promised land. God has took you out of Egypt. God has took you out of the world. He, you are that vine. The Bible says that we are connected to the vine. Jesus is the vine. God has took us out of Egypt. He has planted us in the promise that we may take root. But somewhere around, somewhere along the way, this counterfeit spirit came into the church. Somewhere along the way, this counterfeit spirit decided to lift up altars. This counterfeit spirit decided to take up and, and try to uproot those that were truly planted. And God said, the Bible is saying that God tore down the hedges, that we may be attacked, that we may be trialed, that we may be tested. Understand this, right now is a time of restoration. God has allowed the hedge to come down so the counterfeit spirit can be rebuked, removed, and the children of his Flock may be restored. You are part of that vine. You are part of this world. You, you are not part of this world. I'm sorry. You are a citizen of heaven. The Bible says, check it out. It says, look down. Look down from heaven and see and visit this vine. Right now, in the name of Jesus, God, I ask that you pour out your spirit. That you may visit this vine that you brought out of Egypt. That you may visit these people that you brought out of Egypt. Fill them with your Holy Spirit. Let your face shine upon them, Father God, that we may be restored, that we may be revived. Right now, in the name of Jesus, it says, Return, we beseech you, O God of hosts. Look down from heaven and see and visit this vine and the vineyard which your right hand has planted. Check it out. When God pulled you out of Egypt, he planted you in the promise. It was his right hand. And we all know again, we talked about this this morning, who is sitting at the right hand? Jesus, Jesus pulled you out of Egypt. Jesus saved you. 
Jesus cleansed you with his blood and he planted you in the promised land. He did this, not you, not your works, not anything that you said, not anything that you spoke, none of that. Jesus did it. And right now, God, we need you to visit us once again. If we numb the voice of your Holy Spirit inside of our body, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you remove the callous that we may hear you, that your face may shine upon us, Lord Jesus. Check it out. And the vineyard which your right hand has planted and the branch that you made strong for yourself, it is burned with fire. It is cut down. They perish at the rebuke of your countenance. Let your hand be upon the man of your right hand, upon the son of man, which we know is Jesus whom you made strong for yourself, then we will not turn back from you. Revive us and we will call upon your name. Restore us, O Lord, God of hosts. Cause your face to shine and we shall be saved. There's going to be a remnant, guys. There's going to be a people that out of this season, out of this process, process, will never go back to their vomit. We'll never go back to their sin. We'll never go back to their iniquity. God is going to reign in their heart. I pray today that me and you are that remnant. Me and you are those people. That when God comes and restores us, when God comes and replenishes us once again, that when God comes, and again, I'm not saying you're not restored. I'm not saying that you're not replenished. But what I'm saying is we could always get better. So we call upon the name of Jesus that he may come upon his people right now. God, let your face shine upon us. Let us be saved once again because we need you daily. Restore us that we may be a light in this fallen world. Father God, and I Allow us not to turn back to our vomit ever again. Today, I am here to tell you that the word of God is saying, that the Holy Spirit is saying, God will always choose to restore rather than to destroy. Preach that. Teach that. Release that in the name of Jesus. Father God, I just thank you for this time of worship. I thank you for this time of your word. I thank you for this time of of, of being here with my brothers, Father God. I pray that you put it in their heart, Father God, deep into their spirit that this is not the end. This is not their end. This is a time of restoration, Father God, that you will come and cleanse us, that you will come and prune the vine, that you will remove the tares, you would shift, you would sift, Father God, and remove anything that is not of you in order for your face to shine upon us, Father God, that we may be able to move into this new season full under the unction and power of the Holy Spirit and never, ever return to the vomit of which we came from. I declare that right now in the name of Jesus, I speak life, life. Over this situation, we come against the spirit of sickness, the spirit of illness, the spirit of sin. We rebuke it in the name of Jesus. God will always choose to restore rather than to destroy. Know that. Believe that. Check it out, man. This whole word right here (laughs) is a word of redemption. It's a word of restoration. From beginning to end, God has a plan to restore his people. Gotta understand that, man. Even the Bible says that though the earth may perish, the skies may perish, but the word of God lives forever. You will spend your eternity somewhere. This is not the end. We weren't meant to live on this earth, man. Not in this fallen world. God is restoring. Know that in the name of Jesus. Salute. God bless you guys. And always, always remember, you were built for this.